Hi everyone, this is Lara Jade of Lara Jade Photography and I've collaborated with Greater Than Gatsby to bring you the new editorial retouch sets. The purpose of this video tutorial is to show you how the black and white actions work within the studio set and give you some tips and tricks on how to make the workflow work best for you. On this particular image from a workshop in London last year, we're going to be using the studio set to convert the image to black and white. You can find the black and white actions within both of the location and studio action sets. For example, in the studio editorial collection, you'll find it here towards the end and black and white foundations. And then in the location editorial set, you'll find it in the same place here as well. There is a big difference in using the black and white actions versus the color actions because on these we do not need to use the foundation action. To get the intensity of the black and white and to make it more creative, we built the foundation actions into the black and white sets. So remember, if you are using them, it's better to work from the background layer on a flattened image. As always, color should be handled on a separate document and within my own workflow, I do retouch on one image save the laid file and then continue working on a new document. This enables me to keep my workflow clean and to be able to make those changes within color later on. To get the best out of the black and white actions, you should manually control and mix and match until you get the desired effect. And for this particular image, because it is a studio image, we're gonna obviously go ahead and use the studio editorial collection and head down and for this particular image, I'm gonna go ahead and use high key matte, metallic matte, and high contrast. So we're gonna go ahead and click play on high key matte. We're gonna click play on high contrast. And we're gonna cl click play on metallic matte as well. The best thing about metallic matte is that it gives a really nice neutral tone within the shadows and midtones of the image, like so. But what I wanna do right now is go in and just take down the opacity of each of those actions, like so. And I'm gonna go ahead and start mixing and matching those. Um, the one at the top will have the most intensity. So for this, you can see without the high contrast, it's kind of lacking in shadows um, and contrast overall. So we're gonna bring back some of that high key matte we want to go, I don't, you know, the overall image was quite light and airy, so we don't want to go ahead and change the, um, the lighting of this image. You know, we always want to enhance with the actions we use and not overtake. So at this point, I'm pretty happy with how those are looking. It's brought back some of that as well. If you do want more control with these actions, you can go ahead and mask out any area you find too strong. For example, if you want on the hair and eyes, if there's too much with the high contrast, we can actually go into the action. Um, we can go into the punch here, which actually gives that kind of contrast. And we're gonna go into our subject here. We're gonna choose a black brush because we've al already been given that white mask. And we're gonna go ahead and just paint out those areas you know, on her eyes. It's a little bit bright like so. And that just helps, you know, if you like it in the background, if you like it on the clothes, um, but you don't like it in certain areas because sometimes it can look a bit heavy on the eyes or like the hair or any jewelry if your model has jewelry too. So that's helped there as well. The other great thing about these actions is that you can go ahead and go into each of the actions here and actually go in and change the intensity, brighten and darken. So if you like that black and white, but perhaps it's a little too dark or a little too bright and you don't you know, want to go in and as I did with the mass change a certain part, you want to do it over the overall image, then you can go in and click brighten like so or darken like so here. So on this high contrast, I'm going to go ahead and click darken. On the high key mat, I'm going to go in there and check that. Um, and probably with the high key matte because that's kind of, you know, the overall neutral tones and everything, I'm going to click brighten. And then in metallic matte, I'm going to open that and just overall look at that. And I like what the dark in there is doing to the background. You see how that changes just slightly? So I'm going to go ahead and click that. And you can also go in and change the opacity 
of that option too. So you've got a lot of manual control with these actions, but really to get the best out of the images, um, it's really about going in, mixing and matching, manually adjusting, um, and if you want a more advanced technique, going in and using a mask just to kind of erase it on that area of the skin. And maybe I'll click brighten on that one as well. So I'm just gonna finish my image off by just kind of judging what I'm seeing here. Again, I don't want it to be too dark. Um, there we go, around there. And at this point, I'd be pretty happy with my overall image. You know, it's still got the feeling I wanted when I shot the image. I shot this with a HMI continuous light. Um, it was shot on a wide aperture. So I wanna get that feeling across of this ethereal look. Um, I want it to kind of complement what she's wearing. I still want the detail um, within the dress, as you can see here as well. It's not too overexposed. There's a little bit of contrast. Her eyes still kind of stand out. So at this point, I'd be really happy with where the image is at. Um, and again, as I said, the main tip I can give you here is experiment as much as possible. Obviously, actions are going to work differently. The results on different images for studio images that are lit with strobes, to continuous lights, to HMI in the studio, to HMI outside, to natural light, golden reflectors, silver reflectors. So really just go ahead and kind of play around with the location black and white and the studio black and white to your desired effect. Okay, so the big reveal. So I want to show you guys the before and after. So here's the before. Here's the after. So you can see how that's brought a mood to the image overall. It's tied all of the tones together. Um, it's contoured her skin a little bit because we've gone ahead and kind of, you know, use that kind of neutral tone in the black and white. Um, I do like this image in color as well, but just to give you guys the idea of the intensity of how the mood could be changed, you know, it's important to show you in black and white. So I hope you found this tutorial helpful and continue to watch my other tutorials on the editorial workflow if you haven't already, um, and also the color actions as well. If you want to purchase this set or any of the other editorial sets, go to www.greaterthangatsby.com or if you would like more information on my work, go to www.larajade.com. Thank you.